Hello and welcome to the report, Cal State Fullerton's premier source for news, views, and info. I'm Abby Fernandez. I'm Jeffrey Witten. And I'm Nicholas Garcia. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the new GOP health care bill that has recently been proposed. Plus, we'll be bringing you the latest on Ben Carson's comments on African slaves as immigrants. Also, we have a report on the latest accusations from Trump on Obama wiretapping him during the campaign. All this and more on today's episode of The Report. Before we delve into our first hot topic, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the discussion this semester season. Click on the link in the caption of any of our report episodes to fill out a secure Google form with your opinion on any controversial issue that we've talked about now or in the past, as many of these issues are recurring and evolving, ranging from gun control to abortion, climate change, or the state of politics right now. All we ask is to please keep it civil, and as with any essay, cite your sources. House Republicans released their long-awaited replacement plan for the Affordable Care Act on Monday. The American Health Care Act was developed in conjunction with the White House and Senate Republicans. Some of the main questions that are still unresolved are how many people will it cover and how much will it cost. However, many of the components that we do know are some of the Obamacare Signature Acts are still will be gone immediately, such as the tax on people who don't purchase health care. Some protections include the ban on discriminating people with pre-existing conditions and the provision that allows young adults to stay on their parents' plan through the age of 26 are still intact. The replacement plan benefits people who are healthy and high income and disadvantages those who are sicker and lower income. These changes could be advantageous to those who are younger and healthier who want to enroll into smaller and cheaper benefit plans. But they could be costly for older and sicker Obama employees or enrollees, I'm sorry, who rely on the law's current requirements. Also, a curious thing has happened to the Republican replacement plan as it, it has evolved through multiple drafts. It has begun to look more and more like Obamacare itself. The bill keeps some key features of Obama, Obamacare in a scaled-back form. This speaks to how entrenched the health care law has become since its enactment seven years ago and how difficult it will be for the GOP to repeal it entirely, leaving many Republicans confused and weary of the new plan. So I ask you, what are some of the repercussions of the new proposed bill, and what does it mean for those who are currently enrolled in Obamacare? Also, with many conservative groups, the most vocal opponents of the bill, what happens next? I think the whole point of insurance is not being met here with this new proposed bill. Mm -hmm. The whole meaning of insurance is to be a safety net for all Americans. This proposal is not that. It's basically allowing insurance holders or the insurance companies to pick and choose who they want to insure. And it happens to be the wealthy and the healthy. It should be a safety net for everyone and everyone should be paying into it, which is why I personally would argue for a single payer uh, socialized medicine system. That way we can get everyone covered and everyone's just taxed the same. Yeah, well, I, I see what you're saying with that, and I would agree. I think that ultimately we need to keep Obamacare because it took so long to get that and just kind of build on it and improve it because there are things that need to be improved. Ultimately, this plan that's been proposed is going to hurt the sick and the older, and a lot of the demographics are Trump voters. So it's not going to play over so well with them, and if Republicans do pass this, I don't think that they'll be facing... Um, strong chances in the re-election campaigns. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I, I do want to mention that it says that they could possibly keep, um, people could possibly keep the coverage that they have already, but I don't think that's what they're leaning toward, right, at least. Um, and the fact that, you know, this new Republican uh, plan sort of eliminated uh, those larger companies to give um, access to the people for insurances, I mean, that's a huge, huge deal because mm -hmm. I know everybody I've spoke to talks about that. You know, my um, company gives me this. And now that that's not going to happen, I mean, that's a huge deal for a lot of people that are relying right now on it through Obamacare. So I feel like um, definitely people need to keep um, in touch with what's happening, make sure they are aware, because if this does end up happening, I mean, it's going to be a huge, huge change. Absolutely.
Ben Carson stirred up a lot of commotion during his first week as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development when he referred to African American slaves as immigrants. Last week, Carson held his first speech to fellow department members and soon became the number one trend on social media. During his presentation, Carson stated, quote, there were other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less. But they too had a dream that one day their sons and daughters might might pursue prosperity and happiness in this land, end quote. It sounds like someone didn't pay attention in his race history class. The problem with Carson's statement is that the problem with Carson's statement is that it could be perceived as him saying that indentured servitude is equivalent to immigration. This is problematic because African American slaves were stolen and forced to come to America to, to work until death, while immigrants usually come to America voluntarily in hopes to better their future. Of course, Twitter went in with much criticism. Even celebrities Whoopi Goldberg and Samuel L. Jackson had a few things to say. Whoopi tweeted, quote, most immigrants come here voluntarily, can't really say the same about slaves. They were stolen, end quote. However, the attention Carson received after his statements were not all negative. Fans praised Carson and the official page of the HUD department, tweeted, quote, This is the most cynical interpretation of the secretary's remarks to an army of welcoming HUD employees. No one honestly believes he equates voluntary immigration with indentured servitude, end quote. Whether or not Carson intended to equate indentured servitude with voluntary immigration, he should probably watch the movie Roots a couple more times. Was what he said offensive or not? This is outrageous. This is unacceptable, and it's not the first time that slaves have been called immigrants. Here we had a Texas um, textbook a few years ago. The textbook printed, that, and it wanted teachers to teach students that slaves were immigrants and they weren't. So for Ben Carson, who's in the Trump administration, and whoever else in the administration who wants to believe that, that slaves were immigrants, it's unacceptable. And it's just not helping the fact that they're supposed to be an administration for all Americans. I, uh, slightly uh, different here uh, from what Nick said, I do believe that it is a very sensitive time right now. I mean, people are looking and picking apart everything that um, people with titles say, right? As they should, because that's what we're here to do, right? I do believe that his intentions weren't harmful based on what he said. Um, I do believe that he his PR definitely needs to sort of sway him into not saying stuff like that because it doesn't go by people um, correctly. In terms of immigrants and the slaves, right, we know that they didn't come here voluntarily. Um, but if people want to get into sort of technicalities and, um, you know, what it is to, to be an immigrant, it's when someone moves from a foreign country to another to stay there permanently, right? That's what it means. But I do believe that because of what we're going through right now, I mean, stuff like that shouldn't be said, right? And so I think that Ben and his PR need to understand that, right? And, and he needs to sway away from saying stuff like this. I do agree with you. I think people are overreacting, but I think he was attempting to oversimplify something, and I think, you know, he was trying to over oversimplify the difference, and there's a big difference, and that's where he got in trouble. He just needs to watch what he says. Right. But I do agree with you, people are nitpicky these mm -hmm. days. Especially at the time right now, which is why they should be a little more conscious of what they say. Well, from Ben Carson to the president, everybody needs to be more conscious of what they say. And now on to some more politics. President Donald Trump's Twitter fingers were at it again when he dangerously made claims via a series of four tweets that former President Barack Obama had wiretapped the Trump Tower just before Trump's victory. Donald Trump tweeted, quote, How low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the very sacred election process? This is Nixon Watergate, bad or sick guy, end quote. Trump made this claim with no evidence or support, according to factcheck.org. A spokesman for Obama quickly defended the former president and stated, quote, a cardinal rule of the Obama administration was that no White House official ever interfered with any independent inv investigation led by the Department of Justice. As part of that practice, neither President Obama nor any White House official ever ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen, end quote. Barack and Michelle Obama were, sports, were spotted out in Washington, D.C. for the first time since the wiretapping allegations on Sunday. Both individuals were in smiles and appeared to be unbothered. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer reported on Monday that Donald Trump has, quote, no regrets about accusing his predecessor. 
The allegations still stand, and Trump is waiting for investigations to run their course, according to The Telegraph. Currently, there is no evidence to back up the president's claims. However, the White House is, quote, extremely confident the Justice Department will provide, will produce wiretapping evidence, end quote. Since President Donald Trump took office, Congress has been busy passing and introducing new pieces of legislation. We encourage our viewers, active members of the public, to stay informed and contact their local House and Senate United States representatives regarding legislation that may be questionable. First off, we have some key pieces of legislation that have been already passed in this 115th Congress. They include H.R. 321 and H.R. 255. Both promote women in science and entrepreneurship roles. H.R. 321, called the Inspire Women Act, directs NASA to encourage women and girls to study STEM-related fields and pursue careers in aerospace. House Joint Resolution 38 provides congressional disapproval of a rule submitted by the Department of the Interior known as the Stream Protection Rule. The rule was meant as an update to three-decade-old regulations on surface coal mining operations that affect surface water, groundwater, and the productivity of mining operations. A number of introduced bills in this 115th Congress have major implications for public health and welfare. That include H.R. 899 would eliminate the Department of Education, Senate Bill 340, the Sensible Environmental Protection Act, would allow discharge of specified pesticides into navigable waters of the U.S. without a permit. H.R. 637, called the Stopping EPA Overreach Act, would remove greenhouse gases from the Clean Air Act and stop all regulation regarding climate change and global warming. H.R. 958, the Wasteful EPA Programs Elimination Act, would terminate all grant programs by the EPA and its environmental justice programs and would remove extensive funding used for many climate change initiatives and green infrastructure programs. H.R. 861 takes it a step further and would eliminate the EPA altogether. We encourage our viewers to stay informed regarding our current state of congressional oversight that infringes on public health and welfare. We recommend looking at congress.gov regularly as a vast number of bills have been introduced by both parties since Trump was elected. You can also find all House and Senate contact information and voting records at congress.gov. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode, but don't worry, you too can chime into our conversation by jotting down some comments or questions below. And don't forget to tune in next time around for more news, views, and info. I'm Abby Fernandez. I'm Jeffrey Witten. And I'm Nicholas Garcia. Stay fresh, Fullerton.